we've been talking a little bit about joints but we've actually looked at only one kind of joint so far namely the inner joint now there are other kinds of joints which we'll use for different other purposes and in this lecture we'll take a look at those joints as well okay so first of all let's start off by taking the flight stable from the NYC flights 13 uh, package and let's select some of the columns from there and create a new table. So we are creating a new table called flights 2 by taking the columns year, month, day, hour, origin, destination, tail num and carrier. Okay, So just we selected some columns so that we are able to operate with a smaller table perhaps for efficiency. Okay, So now we take this new flights 2 table that we created and we are selecting uh, all columns other than origin and destination just for notation we are showing that so minus origin minus destination meaning leave out those two columns and then we are joining it with the airlines table okay now we could simply say inner join airlines without saying by equal to but then what will happen is that when you remember when you join two tables without specifying what columns to join by then the inner join function automatically joins them by all the common columns. Now it just so happens that the flights table and the airlines table both have a com common column called carrier which is the carrier name or carrier code for example UA for United Airlines, AA for American Airlines etc. Okay so that's one common column they both have but unfortunately they also have one other common column I think it is ear. Okay now we don't want to join by that column because all we want is to use the carrier name uh, carrier code and get the carrier name that's really what we are trying to do here so ear has no role to play in this right in fact the column called ear means one thing in the airlines table and the column called ear has a completely different meaning in the flights table right so it doesn't make sense to join by those two columns okay so that is why we are explicitly saying join these two uh, these two tables by using the carrier column in both of those tables okay so that's the idea here now this approach works when the column name is the same in both the tables that you're joining now of course it's possible that the column names are different and there's a different syntax for joining when the column names are actually different in the two tables okay so as a result of all this what you get back is this you get all the details of the flight that we have asked for plus you also get the carriers name not just the carrier code the carrier code was there in the flights table now we are also getting the carrier name from the uh, airlines table that was actually the purpose of joining the two things in the first place so again one thing to note is that when we explicitly join by specific columns in other words we mention specifically which columns to join by then the output does not indicate which columns it was joined by right whereas if we simply said inner join airlines then the output would explicitly tell us that these are the columns that inner join used for joining okay that is also something to to be aware of okay now when we want to learn about the other kinds of joints then uh, it's useful for us to have an, a way of visualizing the joints okay so in order to do that let's create two tables so x is a table with two columns called key and value val underscore x and the key is one which a value x1 key is 2x2 3x3 very simple a table and we create another table called y which also has a column called key right so clearly we are going to join by the column called key and its value column is called val underscore y okay so it's got y1 y2 y3 and the keys are 1 2 4 the keys here are 1 2 3 okay so you have a scenario where two of the keys match 1 and 2 1 and 2 and there's a 3 and 4 they have mismatches so that will help us to visualize the joins okay so this is what the two tables look like x and y uh, and the colored column is the column which is the key key column is what is colored and we are going to be joining by that particular column okay so let's take a look at how we are going to visualize uh, the joins using these two tables
okay so once again uh, we are using the terminology called key okay now key again is the within deep layer it's the columns or columns used to perform a join of two tables okay but the primary key okay the notion of a primary key for a table is not something that is implicit to deep layer deep layer doesn't understand the notion of a primary key for a table and therefore i'm calling the word key as informal terminology okay it's not part of the definition of a data frame or of a table okay uh, of course it's very useful but it's just an informal terminology okay so here what we are doing is we are going to look at joining the table x with the table y and we are showing the key columns as adjacent right we have we have flipped around the two columns the first column was actually the key the second column was the value uh, in both of those tables but for visualizing the joins we have just changed the order so that the two key columns are uh, next to each other okay and what we are going to do as you can see from the diagram is to draw lines from each of the key columns so you've got the lines going from one two three and you've got the lines going across these rows okay now what we'll do is if there is a match between the key values we'll show the match as a circle here to indicate a match okay so in this case because there's a match one and one match so there'll be a circle there two and two match there'll be a circle here three and four don't match so there's nothing here okay so that's what we are going to use these diagrams for okay so in this particular case when you do what we have been doing till now as an inner join then the inner join works only when there is a match and therefore the output is going to contain the joining of the first row here with the first row here second row with the second row here the third and fourth rows are going to get eliminated because there is no match for them right so the output is going to be one which is the matching key value and the value is val x is x1 val y is y1 that's going to be the result of this if we did an inner join of these two things okay so this is the result of the inner join because the inner join works when you have a perfect match okay so if you do it x piped to inner join y by equals key okay now strictly speaking we don't have to say by equals key because that's the only common column to the two tables but just for completeness we are showing that okay so if you did that the result is going to be like this as we have already seen okay so this is what we are going to do we are going to see uh, use this kind of terminology or this kind of visualization to see the matches and therefore see what's going to come in the resultant table okay again as i said by equals key is optional as the as in any case key is the only common column so even if we had just said x inner join y without the by equal to result would still have been the same okay and inner join outputs rows only for matches till now we've been looking only at inner joins but of course the very name inner join hints to us that there's another kind of join or there are other kinds of joins and those are jointly referred to as outer joins there are two types of outer joins that we will be talking about uh, in fact three left join right join and full join okay so let's use our diagram to visualize left joins okay so here what happens is we are, again we've got uh, the two tables x and y uh, okay we've got uh, x has 1 2 3 x1 x2 x3 y has 1 2 4 y1 y2 y3 okay so again if we match them up we see that there's a match for th uh, the first row there's a match on the second row the two keys one and one two and two they match up for three there is no match and for four there's no match okay but what happens in left joins is that if th this table is on the left right if you just think of them as two tables one on the left one on the right the x table is on the left the y table is on the right okay now with the left join what happens is even if the table on the left does not have a match its row is still included in the output okay since it doesn't have a match all the fields for the other table are marked with na missing values okay so what you're going to get as output is all the matching rows which is row 1 
and row 2 or the key 1 and key 2, those two are matching. So they'll come in the output. But for the table on the left hand side, since we are doing a left join, for the table on the left hand side, even though there is no match for the key of 3, it is still going to be included in the output. That's why this is called as a left join. The table on the left gets priority. Even if it has no match, it is still going to appear in the output. And because there is no match, all the columns for the second table are going to be NA. Okay, So that's why we got 3, we got X3, but val Y is not there because there is no match, so we put an NA. Okay, So that's the reason that this came up. Okay, So when there is no match, everything on the table on the left is still going to appear because we are doing a left join. Okay, So X is the table on the left, Y is the table on the right. So when you do a left join, the table on the left get, gets importance in the case of no match. Okay, The converse of left join, of course this you would write the R code as X instead of inner join, we're going to say left join by equals key and that will produce this result. Okay, Notice that 4Y3 is not in the result at all because there was no match but 3X3 is in the result even though there was no match because we did a left join and the tibble X is on the left. Okay, So the converse of this, uh, let's take an example of this. Show the supplier names and quantities for all shipments. Okay, so that's what this is, supplier name, and this time we are looking at inner join. Okay, so for all shipments, show me the supplier names and quantities. So the way we are going to get that is suppliers, inner join, shipments, select supplier name and quantity, right? Because we want it for all the shipments, we want the supplier names and quantities. So we join suppliers and shipments uh, 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 with shipments, and of course the joining is going to happen by the common column, which is SNO and we get this result which is shown on the left hand side supplier name and quantity on the other hand suppose we did suppliers left join shipments instead of inner join shipments okay now notice that here we are getting results only when the supplier numbers matched between the two tables suppliers and shipments okay so for any suppliers whose supplier numbers do not occur in the shipments table, their details don't show up in the output. Whereas when we do a left join, okay, so suppliers is the table on the left because that's the first table that we have mentioned, okay, so left, and shipments is the table on the right because that's the second table that we have mentioned. Because of this, any suppliers for whom there's no match in the shipments table will still show up, and that is why you see here Blake and Adams are both showing up in the results. They don't show up here. Blake and Adams don't show up here because this was an inner join. This is a left join. Suppliers is on the left. So any suppliers for whom there was no match in the shipments would still show up with an NA. That's exactly what has happened. Okay, so we are seeing Blake and Adams showing up. That's the difference between inner join and left join.